we have seen Savitri's tussle of joy and grief simultaneously going on and she has no clue, no hint, no indication how she is going to proceed, what she has to do. But in the meanwhile, she has also accomplished something which is very remarkable. She has become now so calm, so detached that as if nothing is going to happen to her, nothing adverse nothing kilometers is going to happen to her. A kind of confidence got built into herself. It is not only <coughs> indifference, but it is something very affirmative, something positive. It is a state which has now made herself ready to receive the divine command. It is as if she is now sure that she is going to get the divine command and she will be put on the path of yoga. What she has to do, that she will accomplish. So <clears throat> that is the state in which Savitri was. Human Savitri grieving also happy, has advanced to the point of now starting her yoga. Now that condition of Savitri getting ready to start yoga is what the Upanishad would call the Jagrata state, the wakefulness, wakefulness. That is self. We are awake, but we are not really awake in the yogic sense. We are stupidly awake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the Savitri's awakening now means that awakening, in fact, is awakening. So it is that waking state, Jagrata. That is what the Upanishad calls. In fact, the Upanishad calls there are four steps. You shall see them later on also. The first is Jagrata, the second is dream, Sapna, the third is Sushupti, deep sleep, trance, and the fourth is the luminous ineffable. Now, so Savitri now has in that sense, in the first canto, completed the yoga or the Jagrata state or the wakeful consciousness. And now she is ready to step into the sapna, into the dream consciousness. Now the transition between the two is what with which the second canto begins. The second canto begins with that transition from the Jagrata to the sapna to start with. And the title given by the poet, by the yogi, to this state, the parable of the search for the soul. He calls it a parable. He calls it a parable. Now this is significant in the sense that he is kind of describing the stages through which Savitri will now pass into the dream consciousness into sapna and that sapna, that dream consciousness is reviewing the entire past of this creation, the entire past, whatever has happened until now in the entire history of evolution, it is that which Savitri is going to review. So it is in that sense, she is kind of dreaming the whole past, getting the essence of the entire past, and now she is ready to move forward in that sense. So the, the, that is the uh, quick meaning of the word parable. 
but parable has many senses about parable now <coughs> this is a quotation from shebandu the parable of evolution as i was telling you it is basically the dream consciousness tracing the entire cosmic past how evolution has arrived at this point savitri is assimilating the entire essence of that evolutionary consciousness so that she can now make progress further up is it surely for the earth consciousness the very fact that the divine manifest himself is the greatest of all splendors really yeah i mean it is it's really a wonderful thing that he can come and manifest himself here see it is of course also an act of tremendous grace luminous grace also consider the obscurity here and what it would be if the divine did not directly intervene and the light of lights did not break out of the obscurity for that it is a meaning or a manifestation now this is exactly in the context of the parable again savitri is a part of that divine manifestation the divine manifest savitri comes here as an avatar to do something and that is really a great splendor you see one of the most beautiful splendors for the creation you see then he says in another letter the descending power that is the avatar chooses its own place body time for the manifestation all the circumstances it fixes up and then it comes everything is kind of ready so when you say that shrivendu was born on 15th august 1872 it is not really in that sense he was born on that the entire history of the last 300 years 400 500 years preparing the materialist base psychological base of the society the entire development of consciousness of humanity etc was under strong preparation for this birth to occur at this point for this birth to occur at this point is it so the entire preparation was done in fact in all the lines of savitri the cup is prepared over a period of 1000 years period of 1000 years we have seen already the climb is 1000 years so it is not exactly in that sense 15th august 1872 there is that may be so to say a visible link visible expression for us but the preparation avataric preparation was going on behind the scene in the course of time you see so the descending power chooses its own place body time for the manifestation the avatar is necessary when a special work is to be done and it and in crisis of the evolution so there are two things the crisis of evolution and the special work to be done it is for these two purposes that the avatar comes now the crisis of the evolution in the sense that you have reached a deadlock you are not able to proceed further you are a mental being and you are stuck yourself by being a mental being that is the crisis you are not able to go beyond that so the necessity of the avatar becomes imperative there is the avatar is a special manifestation why for the rest of the time it is the divine working within the ordinary human lives as vibhuti so there is a difference between the coming of the avatar and coming of the vibhuti you see avatar hood has little meaning if it were not connected with the evolution so he is really tying up the avatar hood with evolution obviously the hindu procession of the avatars the 10 avatars the avatar as we call them the avatar the ten avatar is itself as it were a parable of evolution now he uses the word a parable of evolution you see 
the coming of this 10 hours. And well, I mean, he has told here the 10 hours. First, the fish avatar, then the amphibious animal between land and water, then the land animal, then the man lion avatar, bringing, bridging man and animal, then man as dwarf, small and undeveloped and physical, but containing in himself the Godhead and taking possession of existence. Then the Rajasik, Satvik, Nirguna avatars, leading the human development from the vital Rajasik to the Satvik mental man, and again the over-mental Superman, over-mental that is Krishna, Krishna, Buddha, Kalki, depict the last three stages the stages of the spiritual development. This is according to the parable of evolution given by the Hindu procession. You see. This, that's how it is. Now he says, the stages of the spiritual development. Krishna opened the possibility of the overmind. Buddha tries to shoot beyond the supreme liberation, but that liberation is still negative not returning upon earth to complete positively the evolution. But that is necessary also. Kalki, the last avatar, is to correct this by bringing the kingdom, the divine, upon earth. That is the culmination of the avatar. Destroying the opposing asura forces, the progression is striking and unmistakable. The process of evolution. In fact, I made the same list again in a different manner. The first avatar is Matsya, that is fish. Second avatar is Kurma, that is tortoise. So you can see from water it is coming out to tortoise. Third is Bor, Varaha. Bor, B O R, Bor. Huh. The animal, bear. Varaha. The fourth is Narasimha, lion man. Half lion, half man. So it has already come now to the mental point you see here. The fifth is Vamana, dwarf. As you said here, everything is sort of brought in small, dwarf. The fifth is Vamana. <coughs> Then the fifth is Parashuram, Rama with the axe. He comes with the axe, Rama. Parashuram. Parashuram is axe. He comes with the It is he who destroys all the Rajasic forces which are coming in the way. He precedes Rama himself. In fact, practically Rama and Parashurama are coming together simultaneously. The moment Rama Uttas Parashuram disappears, See, the moment he appears. Then the fourth, then the uh, sixth is Rama, Ramachandra. Sri Rama is calling. The fifth is Krishna, the overmind of the Rama is the Satvic man. You see. Seventh is Krishna, and eighth is Buddha. And sorry, the ninth is Buddha, and the last Kalki, that is eternity. So we have got fish, tortoise, boar, man, lion, dwarf, Rama with the axe, Ramachandra, Sri Krishna, Buddha, eternity. That is what the Dashavatar means you receive. And so the, and the Christian Pasasan Avatar. Dasha means ten. The Dasha means ten. Avatar means divine manifestations. Uh, Jesus Christ was also in our child. Christ? Christ. Christ. Now, Christ is not coming this city. He is giving now the Hindu procession. Mm. Ah, so there is one more. <laughs> See, he, he, he is giving. Yeah. Actually, about, uh, he, he talks in the Isra Gita, three avatars. Krishna, Buddha, Christ. Krishna, Buddha, Christ. But then, in another place, he makes a distinction. These ten are the avatars of the main line. These are the ten avatars of the main line. Then there are other types of avatars, and in that he names 
क्राइस्ट ये नेम्स रामाकृष्ण ये नेम्स चैतन्य 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 प्रभु दे आर ऑफ ए डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ मैनिफेस्टेशन सो देर ही स्पेसिफिकली मैं क्राइस्ट इज पुट इन दैट कैटेगरी ऑफ अवतार्स अकॉर्डिंग टू द इंडियन पुराणस दिस इज इन एलिस्ट ऑफ टेन अवतार्स से बट सेवन टू पुट्स क्राइस्ट बुद्धा एंड कृष्णा इन दिस इज द गीता एंड क्लैरिफाई इज क्राइस्ट इन द सीरीज ऑफ राम कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु एंड क्राइस्ट Yeah. I think he's more than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but yeah, I know. Yeah, we could say that. because you see here here the discussion is very clear. Kalki is to correct this by bringing the kingdom of the divine upon earth, shooting out of his creation that was Buddha. to bring that divine here upon earth destroying the opposing asuri forces the progression is striking and unstable see the divine upon earth that is the, the, the description that is exactly yeah 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 we can say both yes yeah yeah now he he clarifies the same thing I only took the Puranic list of Avatars. <laughs> you see, he's on guard. <laughs> he says, "Look, I was explaining to you what the Puranas say. I have not told you what I have." He says, <laughs> and these people didn't persist. I I only took the Puranic list of Avatars and interpreted it as a parable of evolution. As a parable of evolution. Again, he says, "A parable of evolution." so as to show that the idea of evolution is implicit behind the theory of avatarhood to the buddhist buddha was not an avatar at all to the buddhist he was the soul climbing up the ladder of spiritual evolution till it reached the final stage of emancipation going into nirvana although Hindu influence did make Buddhism develop the idea of an eternal Buddha above that was not a universal or fundamental Buddhistic idea. Whether the divine in the manifesting is avatarhood, who choose to follow the line of evolution from the lowest scale, manifesting on each scale as a vibhuti, is a question again to which the answer is not inevitably in the negative. If we accept the evolutionary idea, such a thing may have its place. Well, then he clarifies few other things. But this is important. There are two sides of the phenomenon of avatarhood: the divine consciousness and the instrumental personality. Divine consciousness and instrumental personality. Instrumental personality of the one who comes as an avatar. Savitri, as an instrumental personality, that is what we are seeing in the first canto. But even behind this instrumental personality is present the divine consciousness. The instrumental personality in nature, under the conditions of nature, and it uses it according to the rules of the game. That is exactly what we are seeing, Savitri. according to the rules of the game though also sometimes to change the rules of the game but first accept the rules of the game to change the rules of the game the mother said but i don't you have any rules also <laughs> she says straight away there are no rules for me if avatar is only a flashing miracle then i have no use for it he undergoes to the entire human process of consciousness of development he accepts the entire burden of humanity and takes it forward otherwise it has no meaning if it is a coherent part of the arrangement of the omnipotent divine in nature then i can understand and accept it 
well i mean uh, this is about the parable <laughs> of the avatars and uh, shivanu has used it purposely that title the parable you see or the story so, so you see now of course the parable is a very common phrase in the biblical uh, literature and we had number of famous parables the parable of the good samaritan the parable of the lost coin the parable of the lost sheep the parable of the ten virgins you see how they squandered away the chance to see five of them you see but you know all this yeah yeah so that way uh, uh, in in that sense Uh, it is a certain meaning also parable of the poor jains and all that you see prodigal son prodigal this is supposed to be famous thing prodigal son parable. and it is in a certain sense the title also indicates the depth of occult charge which is there in the entire evolution through indicative instances and therefore it is a parable he is not tracing like a scientific document the entire course of history of evolution this happened this happened this happened is that therefore he is talking in the terms of a parable you see the parable of the lost sheep lost coin ten virgins now well the word parable a short allegorical story designed to illustrate or teach some truth religious principle or moral lesson that is what the parable word parable means a statement or comment that conveys a meaning indirectly by the use of comparison analogy or the like you to see how he developed that word is it a allegory homily epilogue a short story that uses familiar events to illustrate a religious or ethical point related adjectives parabolic etc etc well there are a lot of things here but the most important thing is the parable of broken window we are familiar with this from sakon wa e sakon no wa pa by <laughs> yeah but but have you read this parable no it is very interesting is a recent one uh, about 100 years ago this man basiat 1850 did you are 1850 this is a very beautiful uh, illustration of economic principles of economic he is sitting in the form of a parable Have you ever witnessed the anger of the good shopkeeper, <laughs> James Goodfellow? That is the name of that shopkeeper. When his careless son has happened to break a pane of glass in the church or in the house or the shop, he has broken the window pane. If you have been present at such a scene, you will most assuredly bear witness to the fact that every one of the spectators, were there even thirty of them. by common consent apparently offered the unfortunate owner this inevitable consolation they gave the consolation to the owner whose window pane was broken by his own son what is the consolation it is an ill wind that blows nobody good everybody must live and what would become of the glaciers if panes of glass were never broken <laughs> they have to live they have to make her make you see let let us break the windows so that the glass can be prepared you see <laughs> so that is the economics you see part of it <laughs> now this form of condolence contains an entire theory which it will be well to show up in this simple case seeing that it is precisely the same as that which unhappily regulates the greater part of our economical institutions this has to happen therefore the grows money grows and the commerce grows till like that you see 
suppose it costs six francs to repair the damage <laughs> and you say that the accident brings six francs to the glazier's trade who is going to prepare that to cloth that encourages that trade to the amount of six francs i grant it i have not a word to say against it you reason justly the glazier comes performs his task receives six francs rubs his hands and in his heart blesses the careless child <laughs> all this is that which is seen but if on the other hand you come to the conclusion as is too often the case that it is a good thing to break windows that it causes money to circulate and that the encouragement of industry in general will be the result of it you will oblige me to call out stuff there your theory is confined to that which is seen it takes no account of that which is not seen now this is parable is not this so that is how you will state it so we have got a modern instance of parable also 